What's up, Philadelphia sports fans? Welcome to the War Room. I'm Anthony Pinto. You are chat. We are War Room Philly. How's the lighting? Now we're ready. How you guys doing out there in the land of chat? It is... It's Christmas Eve. It's the... It's the show before football starts. The next time we talk chat, we will be discussing an Eagles victory over the New England Patriots. But in the meantime, let's talk about the here and now. We got some predictions as far as the NFL goes. We got some predictions as far as the rest of the MLB season goes. And uh, we can start with the breaking news that happened last night as we all went to bed. Elton Brand thought he could sneak in a real slick move and uh, and go ahead and pull in uh, Danny Green back to the uh, back to the the Sixers. Football doesn't start until after the Phillies win the World Series. Come on, Red October. What up, Iberg? Iberg? Ibig? I'm going to call you A. Let me know what I should call you in chat. I love seeing the first time in chat. Thank you for the follow. Welcome to the channel. Um, <clears throat> if you've already been a part of this community, albeit through Facebook or anything, and you want to be known through your Facebook name, by all means. If not, just let me know how I can pronounce your Twitch name more properly. Because, like Charlie Day, reading is not my strong suits. Uh, but I I'm calling you I until then. Hey, I, hey. Um, here's what I'll say to that. Baseball is my absolute favorite sport. That being said, football starts this Sunday, even this Thursday. Uh, I can, I literacy, what even is that? BG works? BG, okay. Hey, you're the BG in this chat. I like that. I like that. Whenever I think BG, I think strip sack. And oh man, I really screwed the pooch. I really screwed the pooch. Uh, good friend of the show, Kevin Locker. He got me a sweet strip sack mug. Everyone goes Philly special, which pff, obviously so. Um, but Kevin Locker, because of the special moment that has been captured in my bar, um, got me a strip sack mug. Brought it to me for uh, for the fantasy draft over the last weekend. Um, <clears throat> but you know, here in Philadelphia, we can we can focus on more than one sport. So, uh, yeah, but, but here's what I love. I love that Red October and the World Series energy that you brought. And, hey, make no mistake, especially here at War Room Philly, baseball is first. Uh, because Joe Hunter's in chat. There's my coach. Uh, baseball is first. It's just, it, it will always be first. There's no sport. Like, <clears throat> I will get emotional watching a Phillies regular season game. There's no other sport that does that. But like when Lorenzen threw that no hitter, that was so joyful and such a rare moment that like I was, you get emotional in that moment. And how can you not be romantic about baseball? Uh, but that being said, I mean, you see the shirt. It's it's Eagle season, baby. Um uh, but yeah, I love it. Active chat tonight. Uh, we can also get enraged at more than one sport. Mitch, we can. Oh, and we will. Oh, and we will. Um, I don't inspect. I don't expect uh, enragedness from the Eagles quite yet. I do think that can <laughs> good for yeah. You've seen it. Uh, I I can. I don't think that we'll see out of the gate. Any any shenanigans out of the Eagles? I think we'll get a win as I as I started off the statement. We'll get in big time into the birds a little later, um, but I do think that um, you know the Phillies, like Mitch, you mentioned it. Phillies bullpen can get enraging at times, um, and you know it, it happens. But you got to remember that all in all. This bullpen has been pretty solid. As long as Alvarado can presumably um, get that that elbow in line, uh, you you know you got Alvarado still intact. 
Uh, assuming that he's healthy, you have Alvarado, and you know he's shaky at times, but he's still Jose Alvarado. Um, I think Craig Kimbrell will be fine. He's seen some hiccups out of him as of late, but he's made it interesting all season. Um, <clears throat> that being said, he was perfect until post All Star break. So, uh, and he blew the All Star uh, the All Star game as well. So, um, or no, he didn't blow it. He made it very interesting though. Um, but uh, it's it's just uh, you know your your bullpen. Obviously, it's and, and in general, uh, right now the Phillies pitching is is I guess more in question than not um, since the no hitter Michael Lorenzen has been, um, and then just in general, uh, Taiwan Walker. Um, uh, look, he's not an ace. But again, I think that when you consider he's your fourth starter, and then when you look around baseball and see what other teams, even good teams, are offering as for as a as far as a fourth starter, Taiwan Walker's just fine. Um, ultimately, with this pitching staff, it's going to come down to the hot topic, Aaron Nola. Um, and I'm I'm not here to defend Aaron Nola, not this show, but. <clears throat> That is, uh, that's where, that's really the big question. It's going to be, what, what do we have from Aaron Nola? And what can, you know, are, are we going into this postseason with Aaron Nola the ace? Or are we going in with the shakiness? Because after that, you're, you kind of know what you're getting. Uh, as of right now, I would say your four would be... Wheeler, Nola, uh, Wheeler, Nola, uh, Wilson, uh, Ranger Suarez, and, uh, and, uh, oh my god, I just had the biggest of brain farts, uh, <laughs> Ramirez, or, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so, um, Walker, I know, thank you, Murph. Murph, I just had like a full on. I think I had a stroke. I think I just had a stroke. Uh, I was literally talking about Walker. Then for some reason, I almost said Wilson Valdez, and that threw my brain just just off. I don't know where that name popped into my brain. I don't even know if that's a real player, but I digress. Sometimes, sometimes you just. <sighs> uh, but yeah. Um... I think Walker has been just fine um, as far as when you kind of take into consideration that, like, look at the Cubs' fourth starter. Um, so, and we know what the Phillies' bread and butter is. It's their lineup. And right now, that lineup is really starting to click. And if you get bench piece pieces to kind of fall in line with that, um, it's going to kind of be one of those runs that I think the Phillies are, are fully capable of going on. Uh, you know, it's going to come down to can they beat teams like the Braves and Dodgers. It's always been that. Last year, we... You know, we saw that the Phillies could beat the Braves. And I would say that this this year's team is better... This year's Phillies team is better than last year's Braves team. I would also say that last year's Braves team... Or this year's Braves team is better than last year's Braves team. Just based off of, you know, current health. So... Yeah, it's going to be a tough one. And obviously, if, if it comes down to Phillies-Braves in an actual series again... That's going to be tough for the Phillies to kind of get one over on them again, but that's what they're here for. Um, and again, I, I just, as you start to see one by one pieces fall in line uh, on this team, you just kind of get the, you just kind of get the sense that like, oh, maybe even Nola gets hot. Oh, maybe JT starts hitting in the clutch a little more. Oh, maybe you like, there's still room for improvement. And this team has kind of, look, they've hit back down to, to kind of uh, earth <laughs> <clears throat> but like this time last week, this team was red hot. And again, you just took, you went three, three for three over this little trip. You just took the series over the Padres. 
But uh, at the end of the day, it's... You're liking what you see out of your team. That's that's really... We can worry about the Braves if when we get to the Braves. But right now, as a Phillies fan, you got to be at least pretty content with the product. Knowing there's still a month plus to play. You're in the lead for the wild card by a, a little bit. And again, I keep falling back on there is room for improvement. There's room for improvement. So that, to me, as a Phillies fan, I don't get discouraged by that. I get encouraged by it. And I think that at some point, these things that maybe we've been quote-unquote nagging on, well, they're going to hit. And if you're, you know, shout out to Greg Hall in our our friend chat uh, with with Murphy, since you're in chat, uh, if you're bashing on JT because he's not hitting with runners in scoring position, well, if you look at his numbers compared to catchers, he's right up there. And just because JT has sort of set his own standard, maybe he's not living up to it at that end. But, I mean, JT Real if, if you're complaining about JT Real Muta, something's going good with this team because the guy's been playing catcher damn near every day. And... You know, defensively, he's rock solid. Calls an amazing game. Where's number 10? Um, Let's just stay away from the Brewers. That's fair. But I would say, I mean, we kind of have the Brewers number as far as, like, playoffs go throughout their late, throughout recent and not so recent years. Now that I realize 2008 is a long ways away. Um, but yeah, the Brewers, they tagged us up pretty good. They tagged us up pretty good for sure. <clears throat> and the Brewers are currently atop the NL Central. They got a one and a half game over uh, lead over the, the Cubs. And then when you start looking at... Uh, Damn, this doesn't give me the wild card. Bonk. Okay, Google. <clears throat> How would the lineup look in your opinion with uh, Reese back? I feel like our lineup is pretty good where it sits. Uh, would putting Reese back make things make it better or, or more difficult? I'll start with this. What do you think? And I'm not trying... Like, I don't want to sound... That sounded arrogant. I don't mean it like that. You're new... Like, I want to know because I've never seen you in chat. What are your thoughts? Um, and I'll, I'll give you mine. Uh, and, and if you're... Like, I'm not persuaded by anybody in chat. If anything, I... Uh, you know, so... Um, I just want to know how you feel. Would Reese uh, even be available for the postseason? So it is very, 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 very unlikely... But there is still a chance, Mitch. And the best uh, example and or most recent example that we have of that is Kyle Schwarber did uh, something very similar to Reese towards a same exact injury. And Kyle Schwarber did, in fact, help the Cubs win a World Series coming fresh off of, of an ACL injury. Um, he was out for the entire regular season and got back for the playoffs. It's doubtful. But there is still a chance. And just because I don't want, like, dead air, I will just start answering BG's question. Um, I think it makes... <clears throat> maybe it, it... So it might make things difficult as far as uh, Topper goes. But, oh, man. Like, you have to be a Stone Cold Reese hater to think that adding Reese Hoskins... Into your into this lineup, like we're not talking next season. If we're just talking right now, you can just add him on to the team. It makes it better. Maybe he's not playing every day, but it it certainly makes your team better. If he's uh, if he can be a potential DH piece, if he could play, forget the field. If he can just be a bat in that lineup, oh. I, 
it's 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 a damn shame we didn't get to see Reese Hoskins in this lineup this year because Reese would have got the bag because of how how pitchers would have just had to pitch to him. <clears throat> yeah, uh so what I would say is to the dynamics of the lineup, I think I think you just at that point you're probably overthinking it and I don't mean that with disrespect. Um, I, I just think that, yeah, uh, like, cause even think about it this way, uh, there's no, like, this isn't like when Charlie Manuel was around and it was one through one through seven, one through eight was the same, like every day, even with this team, there's some wiggle room and there's been that wiggle room all year while they were finding their grooves, this, that, and everything. You're not taking Reese Hoskins and putting him in the two hole. That would mess up the dynamics of your lineup. That would be a bad management. That would be a bad management move. But if you take Reese and you're putting him in the seven, eight hole, you got that power just down at the one through seven, one through eight. You just have to worry about nightmares. Again, uh, this is all very, very hypothetical, but um, from Maryland, nice, nice, good to good, good to get you up here, good to get you, good to get you on. Happy to happy to see you here. Um, so yeah, look again, uh, you're right in a bit. Like if Topper were to just take him and stick him in two, that would mess up the dynamics of the lineup. That would be a bad managing decision. I don't think Rob Thompson is that bad of a manager that he would be like, oh, well, Reese used to hit two. This <laughs> Reese used to hit two <laughs> in a lineup far weaker than this. Reese would hit six, seven, eight in this lineup, especially given the circumstances. But, and, and one more thing, like, Again, maybe it would mess up the the dynamics of the lineup if Bryce Harper can't play first base. But it it looks like Bryce Harper, maybe not every day, but he could give you some some you know he can give you games. I think even in the playoffs, he'll probably give you more games. As far as uh, as far as you know, just just going out there and giving it his all. So. That gives you some more flexibility too. So if Reese is, because I I don't think he'd be able to play the field. I don't think he's ever gonna like. I don't think he's gonna play this year. Like I just like hand on my heart. I want it more than anything because Reese Hoskins making his Phillies debut in a playoff game at a sold out Citizens Bank Park would take. This is the norm. This is. This is where we are in Red October. It would be. It would it would it would be bedlam. It would be bedlam at the bank just to see Reese Hoskins step out on that field. I just got chills. I just got chills. I got my hair standing up on my arm thinking about it. Um, Mitch, I'm afraid you're right. Here's what I will say, though. If he's going to take uh, a one-year prove-it deal and put on any team's uniform, it's going to be the Phillies. So that, that to me, is uh, my biggest um, reason for optimism to think Reese Hoskins will play as a Philly again. Objectively speaking, though, Objectively speaking, this is not Anthony Pinto, the Phillies fan. Objectively speaking, I, I, I think the best move might be to move forward from Reese Hoskins. Anthony Pinto, the Phillies fan, though, uh, it's tough. That's tough. I, I just would hate the last memory of Reese Hoskins in a Phillies uniform to be an injury. Just sad because that th the bat spike, yeah. Hey, no matter what, guys like 
guys like uh, Reese, you know, maybe Nola. They're going to be Phillies forever as far as, like, in, in the history books. But we don't like to think about the offseason until the offseason's here, especially when we know there's a big playoff run coming, Chad. A big playoff run coming. Um, and, yeah, I guess just when it comes down to uh, to kind of the whole uh, shebang of everything, it's, it's going to be fun. When we can kind of take a look. At the standings, we could start even with the American League. Let me do 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 do. Uh, do, 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 do. Eh. So um, let's look at the East. And I gotta be honest, coming out of the East, I got the Devil Rays. I still call them the Devil Rays. Shout out to me being a boomer. Um, I got the Rays winning the East. Um, I realized that the uh, Orioles have a three and a half game lead right now. That being said, I still think, uh, the Rays just, they have the, maybe I shouldn't always go off this, but the Rays just are the more proven team historically. And until the Orioles show me that they're ready to take that leap as an organization, I got to go as far as, uh, the Rays in front of them uh, winning the AL East. Um, AL Central, six-game lead over the Guardians. I got, I got the Twins winning this one, in which is not really much of a conversation starter. Uh, I just realized you guys can't see all the other ones now that I can't scroll down enough. So let's move my face down more. Uh, AL West, quite possibly the most interesting and electrifying pennant race in all of the MLB currently. You have three teams schmoomshed just right there at the top uh, with the Astros, Mariners, and Rangers. And I'm going to... Right now, there are two games out, but I am taking... I am taking the Rangers to win the AL West, and it is purely based off of fuck the Houston Astros. That is my logic. Take it as you will. But in all fairness and in all seriousness, we saw opening day. We saw right out of the gate, this Texas Rangers team was way more than we all thought going into the season. They've been real since day one, and I think they're going to win the AL West. Also, fuck the Astros. BG goes, BG goes Phillies and uh, Baltimore. Is that, am I sensing your Maryland, am I sensing your Maryland bias? Am I? And if you're a Baltimore fan as well, let me know, because I'm interested. That's okay. That's okay. Man, four hours, uh, four hours and one for Altuve. Four home runs and for Altuve. Get out of here. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah I, I hate, I hate Altuve. I hate the Astros, you know, butt hurt, butt hurt, butt hurt. Hey, again, if you, like, I don't think there's any, like, I think you got to be a fan of one team, right? But, like, I don't think there's anything wrong with being, like, this is my my team, this is my National League team, but I also like uh, an American League team. You know, like, for me, I guess it would be, like, it used to always be the A's, but now... The A's, it feels like a, I'm taking a political stance by not being an A's fan until they stay in Oakland. Uh, obviously, I like the the Angels, but they're just as disappointing as the A's. Um, so, so yeah. If the Astros lose, America wins. Change my mind. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Because you're right. You could run off of that platform. I've seen candidates win off of way worse. <laughs> Um, so that's the American League, and we'll hop on over to the, uh, wild card st standings, actually. We can go here. Um, so then, yeah, your wild card teams for, uh, the American League. And are we still looking good as far as, yeah. Um, again, another, just, I don't want to say it's, like, jam-packed, but, like, you have Toronto, who are currently tied, uh, Tampa, like, this spot is going to go to whatever team. If it's not Tampa, it is definitely going to be Baltimore. 
So just go AL East is going to be the one seed as far as as far as uh, that goes. And then honestly, it's probably also a lock for those two teams we were just talking about. Um, in the West division, it's like it's that AL West could potentially they have all three. They have all three, uh, you know, their their top com- like competition are all right there, and then because of how baseball is set up now, they might all make the playoffs and then get to damage and fight each other. Hey, check this out. We got the official CBD of uh, of Major League Baseball. Let me know when they got the official THC. Hey. No, should we should we buy some should we buy some create giant? No, I'm just kidding. This damn it, this this is no ads. <laughs> uh, I wouldn't mind the Rangers except the Phillies haven't won uh, in Texas in 2014. Yeah. I think I think we would stack up just fine against them. Um but let's get there when we get there. Let's get there when we get there. Uh, it is an interesting and worth noting that your two teams uh, that could be potentially in there, because Toronto, they are tied with Texas for this last spot. So, you know, uh, Toronto would love to change my mind about that other... Um, the, the, the AL West statement I just made and kind of make the AL East the division with uh, the division with three teams in it. Um, you know, Boston four and a half games behind. Uh, I guess with a hot streak and a couple cold streaks, they're not out of the race, but I would say they're out of the race. Phillies Mariners would probably be my dream out of these statements, situations. Um, maybe would even have to consider going seeing my brother on the West Coast for one of those games. But, uh, but yeah, we'll, again, we get there when we get there. Uh, but, but yeah, Phillies Mariners would be, would be sweet. Although, uh, off that same sediment, like a Phillies Orioles, we take that ride down 95 and we go, we go yell at the Orioles fans when they go, oh, during the national anthem. Keep your damn mouth shut. Have some respect. I don't know why that pisses me off more than anything when I hear people. What I really don't like is when I hear like a smattering of people do it in other stadiums. And it's not, Orioles aren't even involved. I'm like, get out of here. Or the Nationals fans, because they're idiots. They do it. I hope I'm, I hope I'm pandering to BG right now and I'm not, I'm not enraging them. I hope I'm not enraging you and I'm trying to pander a little bit. I'm trying to, um, but but yeah, just just don't venture uh, far away from Memorial Stadium. Yeah, you gotta stay inside uh, inside the harbor. But man, I I love the Baltimore Harbor. It's a fun fun little area. You got the aquarium, all kinds of bars, good food. Uh, yeah, but Camden Yards is uh, as far as stadiums that I've been to. Uh, I guess now it's three. Camden Yards is my third favorite stadium. Uh, Fenway, now that I went to Fenway, Fenway's, uh, Fenway was cool in its own way. Citizens Bank is, you know, it's my home, and that's my, that's number one. Uh, I want to go out and see PNC, though, really, really bad. Uh, really bad. But Camden Yards is, like, if you go into Camden Yards, you're like, oh, this is the OG Citizens Bank. Um, yeah, so, uh, the Rangers, I see Rangers in chat. Yeah, the Rangers, I mean, they're they're a legit team. That's I said that from day one. I'm like, I think this team is going to be better than I thought they were. And I made a prediction, uh, you know, bashing them maybe f- four days prior. Fenway, Wrigley, Camden Yards, got to be top three stadiums to go to. Um, I've been to Fenway now. I've been to Camden. I haven't been to Wrigley. Wrigley is um, up there on 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 ones that I want to go to. But yeah, I said PNC is is number one on my list right now, just based off of how close it is and how nice of a stadium. I I want to go to uh, PNC next year and I want to see Phillies Pirates. 
Absolutely. Oh, and speaking of which, man, shout out to Andrew McCutcheon. You're my boy, man. I hope we didn't watch Andrew McCutcheon play the last game. I really hope we didn't watch Andrew McCutcheon play his last game uh, going out on uh, going out with an injury, and he's going to miss uh, the rest of the season now. And man, Kutch was a guy that I just always loved, and he was on teams that I hated a lot too. Um, but when man, Andrew McCutcheon came to the Phillies... Ah, oh, that was that was a win moment. That was landing Dwight Howard. That was getting Noah Syndergaard. That was a win moment for for the uh, for the for the for the legacy. Uh, you got a jersey. That's a, see the best thing about an Andrew McCutcheon shirt is it's never gonna go out of style, man. You always look. You show up in a McCutcheon shirt. You're gonna get some people that go, "All right, respect, respect." Um, but uh, but yeah, let's get back to. Let's go back to the National League. Um, and then there's Thor. There you go. And let's go uh, to the NL East. And the Braves are freaks. They win, hands down, uh, this race. And it's kind of crazy because, like, when you look at the Phillies, like, they'd be in just... They, they'd be... They'd at least, like... They'd at least have, like, uh, a shot at, like, being like, you know, if a good run and the Dodgers have a bad run, we could take them. But, like, the Braves can go on load management now and still win probably the number one seed. And the Braves are kind of on a freakish path this year. They're a goddamn good baseball team, and... Any team that faces them in the playoffs are certainly going to have their hands full. Uh, I just realized how far we are into this show, though. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to double talk because we still got Eagles football to talk about in the NFL. Um, so let's speed it up a little bit. Uh, Braves win the East. Um, NL Central, Brewers. Uh, as much as I want and need the Cubs to win that Central... I got the Brewers winning it. Um, Dodgers, NL West. Let's look at the wild card standings for the National League. Um, look, I think the Phillies are safe, secure, and sound. Um, don't forget a little time for the Flyers. Don't worry, I will forget a little time for the Flyers. Uh, and if you're going to say anything about the Sixers, we started off with the Sixers and the Danny Green signing. Who could forget? I mean, the best move of the offseason just happened overnight as the Sixers sign Danny Green. And yes, that's sarcasm, but yes, it's also truth. It's pretty friggin' pathetic that the Sixers' best move this season, this offseason so far, was bringing back a washed up Danny Green. Moving on. Uh, <laughs> Uh, as far as um, the NL East wild card goes, boy, I tell you what, it is seven different ways of interesting. Because, look, with a little bit of a hiccup, the Cubs could see themselves out of it. And you could say the same thing for the Brewers. Like, with just like a little bit of a hiccup, you could see either of these teams bounce. Because right up the rear... Three and a half games back, you have Cincinnati. And then behind Cincinnati, look at this logjam that you have. Arizona, Miami, both a half game out behind Cincinnati. San Francisco, two and a half games out. And now the Phillies should have just kind of put the nail on the coffin as far as the San Diego Padres season goes as they're now seven games out. Um, the Phillies have a huge series coming up with uh, with the um the Marlins, and they're, you know, you just lost an arm and uh, an arm and a bat as far as the Marlins go. Um, Alcantara down and uh, Solaire down. So you need to take nine, I mean, two out of three might not be acceptable. Like you might, you might want to go out and get yourself a sweep in that series. And again, distance yourself from the pack. And not only that, like, Eliminate a division opponent while you can. And all in all, just start kind of imposing your will against the teams in the playoffs. So, 
So there's your and there's your there's your baseball predictions moving forward. Now let's talk just a little bit of some football chat. Let's just, let's just a little bit. By a little bit, I mean at least 20 minutes worth. At least. I was trying to queue up uh, the NFL theme song, but I missed the, um, YouTube's apparently not loading on me. Uh, so, um, we got Eagles football starting Sunday. We got NFL football tomorrow. I'm going to... I don't know if I can watch. I, I'm going to at least tune in late. Because it's the Chiefs, and with the Chiefs starting this season off, they're going to raise the banner. And then I'm going to be reminded that the Eagles lost the Super Bowl over a stupid fucking holding call. And Jalen Hurts' was moment was absolutely ruined because of a stupid fucking holding call. Because, yeah, the Eagles defense, yeah, they didn't stop them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But guess what? They did stop them. They made it fourth and two. But because of a stupid fucking holding call, it was first down. Jalen Hurts was robbed of his moment. Because I tell you what, if Jalen Hurts gets that ball with a minute and three seconds left, give or take, because that's about what the Eagles would have had with, I still to this day think and know that he takes the Eagles down, he wins the Super Bowl, he wins the MVP, and we get our parade. But instead there was a stupid fucking holding call, and we never got to see that. So, with that, again, I, uh, I stole him a little better. Best way, to t best way to cleanse that bitter taste of the Super Bowl loss is to get back. No, it's not that. Like, I know, I know what you're thinking, but Mitch, beating the beating the Chiefs in a regular season game, that's that's not what I'm looking for. The best and only way for me to get over that Chiefs loss is to win a Super Bowl. I don't care who against. I don't care who it's against. If it's against the Chiefs, even better. But but truthfully. We were so close, and I was just robbed of it. I mean, one of the most talented teams, if not the most talented team in Eagles history, just kind of was, we were just robbed. We were completely robbed. That team's legacy was completely robbed of them. You know, yeah, due to a lot of factors, too. I'm not going to sit here and sound like a whiny Eagles fan and not mention the fact that, you know... The, the the Eagles' defense showed up short. And that, you know, special teams and offense didn't spot 14 points. Uh, but, yeah, I do want to beat the Chiefs. I want to pummel them pretty hard, too. But uh, it that won't be my revenge. For me, as, it, for me internally... That won't do anything as far as the Super Bowl goes. Uh, who's going to be the Eagles starting running back? Gainwell. Kenneth Gainwell. I think to start the season, it sounds like it's going to be Gainwell at least. Um, it's an interesting question though. Um, no way. Why not? He played like look at look at how he played in the like who was the starting. Running back for the Eagles in the Super Bowl was Gainwell. Go look who had the most yards. He was he carried the team. And he was he was the horse in the playoffs last year. Me personally, I would say Swift, but I think I think from what we saw throughout the uh, 
the offseason, we didn't see Gainwell at all. We didn't see Boston Scott at all. To me, that leads me to believe that they're the starters. Or it means that Sirianni has seen enough of them and he, you know, didn't need to see them, this, that, or the other. But... I just think that... uh, I I also think that you're going to get more than... One running back this... this, uh, I think you're going to get more than one running back in in this scheme... I think you're going to have, you might even see, uh, in particular with guys like Gainwell and Swift, both of them on the field, because either one of them can line up in the slot, more in particular Swift. But you might be able to have times where you're going a little dual running back, which I know everybody loves. Um... It'll be interesting to see uh, what this Eagles backfield produces this year. I just think it's going to be results. I don't really care. I mean, do you guys... I don't have a stake in any of the names on the back, necessarily. Kind of Boston Scott, though, honestly, if I'm being real. He is my boy, Team Dignitas. Rocket League player. Uh, But... um. <clears throat> But yeah, I think that uh, I think you're going to see the offense kind of be used in, or the running game in particular, used in a lot of the same ways that we've seen. Just I think it's just going to be, man, whoever is hot is going to just get the damn ball and go. Four receiver sign, no fifth. Do you think we sign a fifth soon? If we do, it'll probably be like a kick returner. That or they might just pull up uh someone from the practice squad whoever didn't get cut or like signed from a different uh one of the three wide receivers from the practice squad whether it be greg ward Britton mccovey or uh devin allen but uh i think that your active roster will have four and then your uh, your game day roster because you can activate uh, players a certain amount of times. They'll probably use one as many times as they can. Sorry, my cat is literally knocking on the door and it just freaked me out. Um, then you'll have, uh, you know, then they'll go with the second one. You know, I think Howie, I, 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 they might not even have... They might be activating punters off the roster, off the practice squad. Like, we don't even have a punter as as constructed. Gotta love it. I say screw it. We don't need a punter. We just go for it every time. Fuck it. <laughs> um, but, uh... But yeah, it's going to be it's going to be a fun one. I do want to get out a little I'll find a note. Oh, I got a note down there. I'm going to write down my my predictions as as we do it live chat. Um So where are we at here? What should we got for East? AFC East. Who do I got winning the AFC East? Well, that's a freaking easy one. The Bills. This is sorry to disappoint. Um, West. Ooh, we got that. It's another pretty easy one. Unfortunately, I got the Chiefs. Here's what I'll say about that. It would have to take um, maybe a... These are bearing major injuries, right? Let's keep that all in mind. Um, But I like the Chargers. I think that's a a team to buy stock in this year. But I'm not taking them to win that division. I'm just just not. I'm not going to sit here and try to look smart to my handful of people in chat... (laughs) And then go, yeah, no, I'm going to take 
I'm going to take uh, the Chargers over the Chiefs, the team that just beat us in the Super Bowl. But I like the Chargers. Like, they're going to be the best non-division winning uh, team. AFC South. Uh, this one, it's like, again, it's like a... You would have to be down on... Um, like, how do you buy a team other than the Jags in, in the South? Like, I know it's boring, but, like, how how do you buy the Titans? How do you buy the Colts? Like, so, again, just to keep things short, sweet, and simple, the Jags. Um, and NF, or the AFC North, maybe the only one that's interesting uh, depending on your take, depending on your team, depending on, like, uh, you know, how you look at things. It is by far the most balanced division in the AFC. Um, should I say by far? Yeah, yeah. Uh, that being said, um, man, and I'm taking all the favorites, which makes me feel boring, but uh, Bengals. And it's just, you guys know my philosophy. You've seen it. You've heard it all before. It's it, it comes down to quarterback play. And, hell, I love Lamar Jackson. He's my favorite quarterback in that division, but he is not the best. Joe Barrow is. Joe Barrow is one of the four or five elite quarterbacks in the NFL right now. And it's just hard to take against in a league that, especially when you guys, if you guys have been here for, for long enough, you know that, I make my decisions when it comes to the NFL based almost purely and entirely off of who the quarterback is. So, I I think that uh, I think that the Bengals have this division. Um, but again, do not count out the Cleveland Browns um, because it's a decent it's a decently built roster. And if Deshaun Watson gets back to any sort of the form. Uh, that we've seen him play in them before. Uh, that could be a dangerous team. I don't think he's got it anymore. Uh, I, I think that I think that Deshaun Watson was a flash in the pan. Um, I guess you could say the same thing about Lamar Jackson. I don't think Lamar Jackson was a flash in the pan. Uh, I think that he, you know, had some injuries, but uh, outside of that, um, I think that there's a good player there, just on a bad team or a bad offense. Um, but yeah, uh, NFC East, uh, again, getting to, uh, an easy one. We all know the Eagles are winning the East. Um, and honestly, the Eagles only competition, I shouldn't say only because I guess at some point I need to take the fucking 49ers for real but i don't they're a jabroni team with no quarterback um they're jabroni fan base they're a decent team but they have no quarterback and you guys have heard how i say it time and time again the eagles closest and biggest threat in the nfc you guys can mock me mock their you should mock their fans mock the team all you want the Eagles' biggest threat in the NFC is the Dallas Cowboys. I know everyone, and rightfully so, will say, you know, in the power rankings that it's the 49ers. But here's the thing about the 49ers. They don't play the Eagles twice. They don't play the Eagles twice every year. That main fact alone, and just on how close the Cowboys are, kind of are in talent as far as a team goes they're there we just know with the Cowboys it kind of comes down to some key positions and the Eagles just dominate them in those positions and again behind the Cowboys and if you're a Giants fan and you're saying Dax Fugazi and blah 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 uh, Mike McCarthy sucks then you know if you're if you're a Giants fan, then you take everything I just said for the Cowboys, copy and paste, and you're our biggest threat because you play us twice. 
that being said, Eagles, NFC East. Um, maybe not easily, but I think the Eagles win the NFC East. Um, <clears throat> NFC West. You guys know how much I am down on the 49ers, right? This is how much I'm down on the 49ers. My team to win the NFC West is the Seattle Seahawks. Why? I think that, again, I just... you The 49ers just traded their best quarterback. 49ers just traded their best quarterback. And I gotta be honest, I think that whole fucking franchise is full of themselves. And they they just they're just they just they think that like probably how I sound about the flag, they sit there and they they came unprepared to an Eagles game, and yet they act like they cried wolf. You showed up to a game with Brock Purdy and Josh Johnson, and you thought that was going to be okay with your shit offensive line? You thought that was going to be... Are you sure about that? Are you sure about that? That you would have beat us with a third-string quarterback from the streets? Are you sure about that? Because I'm, I'm, I, I am. I'm sure that you would have lost with... You, you could have you could have brought Tom Brady, Tom Brady in. Your team's garbage. Now your team's alright. Your offensive line's garbage. Your quarterback is even worse. So based purely off of my hatred for the 49ers, I'm taking the Seahawks to win the AFC or the NFC West. And also my picks have been boring. Every now and then you gotta give a hot take. Um, the NFC North and what quite possibly could be the most boring race in all of football. Um, Detroit Lions, pretty good football program. They're the odds on favorite according to CBS Sports. But, uh, no matter how much I hate them, I can't disrespect the Vikings so bad that I'm going to put, that I'm going to take the Lions and predict them to do anything as if they deserve that. So, uh, so in my, uh, yeah, I go Vikings to win the NFC North. I got a question from chat from Mitch. <clears throat> I got a frog in my throat. You know, Dr. Pepper, cream soda, it just hits, man. For all my Dr. Pepper purists, this is better. I'm sorry. Uh, Mitch, so I got a question. <clears throat> Better question. Do the um, yeah, I think the Cardinals are going to be a tank team, whether it's intentional or not. I think they're going to tank. Um, <clears throat> for sure. <clears throat> um, NFC South in what quite could possibly be the only race more boring than the NFC North. Um. This is not a hot take. This might sound like a hot take. Me saying the Seahawks over... Uh, me saying the Seahawks over the 49ers is a hot take. And it's a hot take because I don't believe it. But I'm saying it. This isn't a hot take because I genuinely believe it. I think the Panthers win the NFC South. Why, you ask? Oh, I'll feed you baby birds. Well, let's look at the quarterbacks. Because, <laughs> once again, let's look at the quarterbacks. And guess what? Derek Carr? Not doing it for me. Um, as far as... 
Like, uh, does does anyone out there still believe in in Derek Carr? The Atlanta Falcons. I I'm gonna have to Google it. I don't even know who the Atlanta Falcons quarterback is. Desmond Ryder? <laughs> like, uh, it's not, it's just genuinely not a hot take. I think that Bryce Young is poised to be a mild, mildly decent to good quarterback. Um, my entire, I just lost everything. I just... I don't see it being beyond belief that the Panthers go after. Because you got to think about it again. Frank Reich. I think they have a good quarter. Or they, I think they're going to have a good head coach and good staff in place. Uh, Bryce Young, I think, is going to be a good quarterback. Miles Sanders, Adam Thielen, DJ Clark. Um, this offense has got weapons. We already know what they did defense defensively last year. That defense is coming back. I genuinely believe, like, if you want... And this is, like, I'm not really a gambler, but this might be one because I'm looking at the odds. And according to CBS Sports, it's a plus 425. So if I throw down 25 bucks, that's a pretty good return on investment in 17 weeks. Honestly, I think that's bang for your buck if you're looking for a little a little uh, pregame snack. Like, if you're looking for one of them long-term bets. Um, but yeah, that's who I got as far as division winners go. Um, let's do Eagle Schedule, which I've never... We haven't done this. But we can go through and I'll give... Uh, I don't like the format of this. Why is my computer running like old people fuck? What the hell? Um, Alright, I can't find a pretty picture. but uh, I forget if the ASC wild cards. Uh, if I cover them. I didn't cover any wild card teams, actually. If you want, we can... We can talk, what's it? Three... Uh, let's go, um, I think for the NFC, I would say it's, well, for me, off of my troll, uh, that the Niners aren't going to win the division, my three would be Niners, uh... Cowboys and uh, da, 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 Lions. Because fuck the Giants. Because Danny Dimes sucks. <laughs> um, and then uh, AFC wild cards. I'll just make a little note up here. AFC wild cards for me, uh, probably coming out of the north, but nothing for the south. Uh, Chargers. Chargers. Uh, wow. Chargers. That is, that is tough. The AFC... Is so much but like the AFC, their wild card teams should come play for the NFC because like the NFC is just so like it's it's why the Eagles are like the clear cut. It's not even that the Eagles are that good. It's that the NFC fucking blows this year. <laughs> like 
Hot take, Denver takes the wild card spot. Yeah, Mitch. Yeah, Mitch. Is that is that the same Mitch that I see coming to the to the uh, store with the uh, with Denver Broncos gear on? Hey, eh, Mitch. No, no bias there, huh? No bias there, huh? Um, it's not a hot take because you believe it, but it is a hot take, and it's a hot take because for me, for me personally, Mitch. I am so high on the Chargers this year. I think that is a stock. Like, that's a team that, like, you probably have done your fantasy drafts, but, like, get a fucking player from that team. Because that's just going to be a hot offense this year, in my opinion. I think that that's a team that is uh, on the rise. And I just realized that I buried... Um, I buried something here. Let me find it. Uh, yeah, I guess it's too late to go back on it. Here's what I wanted to do, though. The NFC North, if the NFC North, if it's not the Vikings, it's going to be the... In fact, I'm doing it. I'm going back. I'm going to double down on my hatred for Kirk Cousins, and I'm going to make a wild pick. And I'm going to go, uh, can I do this? Yeah, I'm going to do Bears. I'm taking the Lions out. I'm going to go Vikings. Chat, my pregame brain just, like, kicked back in. I am really high on the Bears this year. Call me crazy, um, but I think that the Bears are... Uh, I think they're going to be a team to buy stock in. I think Justin Fields is legit. I think Justin Fields is going to make... So, Hertz was here... Now he's here. Justin Fields came in higher than Hertz. I think he's going to get to around here this year. I think by the time it's all said and done, maybe not this year, but quite possibly this year. If not, I almost guarantee it by next year, Justin Fields will be the second best quarterback in the NFC. Pretty high on Justin Fields. Um, so, yeah, I, I know I'm kind of going a little all over the place. Uh, but I'm going back to it. And I'm I, I'm going to I'm gonna double, I'm, I'm going to kind of go back to, if there's like one team that I think is going to surprise people in the, in the NFL or NFC in particular, it's going to be the Bears. And it's, again, just going off of like, there is just, there's not, that much to believe in in the nfc and if you look at teams and if you look at rosters you can kind of be sold on a team more just because of i you know your take on a on a quarterback and yeah i i just think justin fields is is going to make that leap like he's he's gonna make a hurts-esque leap so um be on the lookout that's another one that uh, might be worth some schmackles. Might be worth some schmackles. At plus 440, that's good odds. So let's run back down. And I got to go back to the. Uh, I got. I still haven't even finished up the wild cards for the. Uh, for the AFC, but NFC. East Eagles, West Seahawks, North Bears, uh, South Panthers, Wild Cards, 49ers, Cowboys, Vikings. Uh, NFC, uh, East Bills, West Chiefs, South Jags, North Bengals. Uh, Chargers are my number one wild card spot. And again, I'm, I'm very high on that uh, organization as well. Um, bu- 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 Back to playoff teams, wild cards. We need two more AFC teams. Are they coming from the NFC East? Are they coming from the NFC North? Man, that's tough. I am going to go Dolphins. 
And I'm gonna go... Ravens. Nope, not buying into the Jets. Sorry. Um, and a lukewarm take. Vikings miss the playoffs and Justin Jefferson wants out. Um, it's not too bad. Not too bad. I'll upgrade my lukewarm take on the Vikings to a hot take. I don't I don't think it's a hot take. He just got the... He, if he's getting paid, though, I mean, I see NBA players do it all the friggin' time. Um, he, he might not ask for out, but he might ask for a new quarterback. He might ask for a new quarterback, because Kirk Cousins can't play with the lights on, especially in Philadelphia. Oh, wait. What's that? What's that? I'm hearing week two, they play here? What's that? It's not week two? Yes, it is? What's that? Prime time? Oh, I must suck to be him. Now, I'm not buying into the Jets thing. I think Aaron Rodgers is a douchebag. Uh, I'm, I'm over Aaron Rodgers. Uh, and now he's, like, trying to do his, like, little, like, recover his PR thing. I, I'm over it. Go go do more podcasts. Like, you're, you're a douche. Uh, I don't know that football is, is like, Aaron Rodgers' passion. Um, I take Aaron Rodgers inherits the Brett Favre. Yeah, I... I, I that team... Look... They're either going to make me eat my words and they're going to be what they think they are. Um, but I just think that they're going to be the dream team and just fall apart. Like, the the Buccaneers kind of did it with Brady, but it, the Buccaneers had a lot of those pieces in place. This is like you're trying to build your core through free agency and it just doesn't work. Like, I know it's fun as a fan because we've been there, but it just doesn't always work that well. My internet has been very bad. So if, if, if it's because of me, I'm sorry. And if we are, keep stuttering in and out. I only wanted to go for an hour. I've been under the weather for like two weeks now. Um, and I'm already over 13 minutes. We haven't even gone down. I haven't even given Eagles season predictions yet. Uh, so let's get into it. Uh, let's go back to the monitor. You guys, if you don't know, I don't give, like, I'm not going to sit here and go, oh, this is going to be a win. Well, I've already said that this is a win, though. But let me do what I my little, like, tally thing here. Uh, one. I, I've i come out and said win, win. So that's two. I like to look at seasons, though, in, like, chunks. So for me, this will be a chunk. And that is a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 0 start. Um, somewhere in here, they lose at least a game. Let's put one in the loss column. Uh... Let's do seven. I'll do seven and two right now. Right now. They might even lose. I'll even now look at it as a chunk. And we are maybe by here, by the bye week, we got... If we have one or two losses by the bye week, that's sitting pretty. Um, This is where it gets tough. This, this is like your heart of hearts here. Uh, really, these four. Um, last Another loss. I got the Eagles going 12 and 5. I got the Eagles going 12 and 5. 
maybe even uh, 13 and 4. Which is a damn good season. You win first place. Um, you'll take that'll that'll hunker down first place. Um, I gotta come. I gotta. I gotta pin one of them down though. Do I want to do twelve and four or safe? I don't want to be safe. Or uh, twelve and five. I'm going 13 and 4. Just because Keith's not here, I don't have to play it safe. Because Keith would be taking the homer picks. I'm going 13 and 4 because... Again, just like... This isn't... This part of the schedule doesn't scare me. I honestly think you go into the bye week with one loss. It's not... Like, it sounds crazy because it's... Nine weeks of football, but Patriots suck, Vikings suck, Buccaneers suck, Commanders suck, Rams suck. There's your preseason. Now it's week one and you're ready to face a real football team. The Jets suck. The Dolphins, that could be a loss, which pisses me off because I'm going to be at that game. But, you know, if, if it's not the Dolphins... Maybe you lose to the Jets, you take revenge on the Dolphins. Maybe maybe the Cowboys get you at home. It always feels like we go opposite. The Cowboys get us at home, we get the Cowboys at home. But it's also because, like, we always play the Cow- I guess this year it's, it's the Giants on Christmas. But, like, we usually play the Cowboys on, like, a holiday. And we're like, we ain't gonna fucking let them ruin our holiday. When you look at these teams, again, this is like, it's more an indictment of our opponents than it is be being like, oh, the Eagles are really good. You go into the bye week potentially with one loss, then okay, here's here's potentially back-to-back losses. Here's when WIP and 97.5, the fucking idiots lose their minds, and they all start to panic. Maybe a defensive lineman went down and, oh my god, fucking world's over. We lost two games in a row. Ah. Now you got the 49ers and the Cowboys as if they're good teams. Um, so that's where you could accrue up to three losses. Um, then you, again, then out of here, this stretch, I think you lose one meaningful game. Maybe the fifth loss is, an, is, is a... A game to the Giants that we don't need that they do. I honestly don't think that this is a homer take though. I think twelve and four or I think twelve and five is just safe. And I don't want to be safe. But I don't think that being bold with this this Eagles team in this week of an NFC is that homer. I don't think it's that homer. I don't know that the Seattle's a hard game, but that could be the one that you lose. I know that I picked the Seattle Seahawks to win the division, but they don't have a quarterback. And that will ultimately be the reason why that, that team can't go that far. They could be. They could be a loss, and if they are, it would help my division you know, look pretty smart. But... It could be. You're right. And like I said, somewhere in this stretch, there's a gonna, there's, after, after these, you know, there's, there's, these are the hard games, right? But also, there's still a loss somewhere hidden in this, in, in, potentially. But even after that, like, it's hard to, it's hard to predict this team to lose six games. Like, without, this isn't, this is bearing injury, this is bearing, you know, Outside, like, consequences. It's hard to see this game. Like, I I can't. Like, let's, let's try to do that. Seriously. Let's try to see where the Eagles could lose six games. Can they lose six games? Realistically. This isn't a home. I'm going to try my hardest. Can they lose to the Patriots? No. Like, no, nah, I'm not saying only a Sith speaks in absolutes. I'm not guaranteeing anything. But, like... Let's be real. 
Do you see them losing to the Patriots? No. Do you see them losing to the Vikings at home in prime time? They've never done it before. Not with Kirk Cousins. No. Buccaneers. No. Commanders. No. Rams. No. Like, I can't even hesitate until the Jets. I can't even hesitate until the Jets. The Jets, the Dolphins, yeah. I could see them. So, alright, there's two. There's two, like, trying my hardest. Uh, the Cowboys were going to split, right? There's three. Chiefs, Bills, there's five. Again, this is where we're trying. We're trying. And then, okay, so saying that's the max. Like, again, bearing injury, six is the max. As you get to that. Five here being hard on our team. Now, realistically, do you see them losing more than two of these games? Because we counted, we counted Dallas. We already said they split, right? So, again, I think that six is like the cap for this Eagles. Six is the the cap for the Eagles. I really like I'm not trying to sound like a homer, I'm not trying to sound like a like a blowhard or bleeding green nation here, but like I honestly can't see this team losing more than 6 games. And if that is my bold statement for the season then so be it. I guess I'll write it down. I'll write it down just Just so it's in pen and paper. You synced it. But yeah, cannot wait, guys. It's been a fun one. It has been a fun one. Chat, thank you guys all for tuning in. Uh, if you guys have any other final predictions, anything like that, though, this has been a marathon show. My throat, like, hurts. Again, I don't know. Maybe it was COVID. I don't know what it is, but I've been, like, just no energy for two weeks, like coming off of it now, uh, which is why we weren't. Uh, we that's why we didn't go live last week. I was just I was dying, I was just, like no fever, but my eyes and my oh, it's just the worst. Anyway, I digress. No one cares about that. Oh, thank you, Mitch. Perfect. Um, I have a post scheduled uh, on Facebook uh, for this week, saying the exact same thing. I genuinely believe and i don't think this is that hard of a hot take but i think jalen carter wins defensive rookie of the year i just do and i want a jalen carter jersey like immediately because the dude is a freak baby that or i want baby rhino i want 98 baby rhino dude is a freak i love it i'm so it is rare that you get to the super bowl and then you get to draft a freak of nature. You get to draft potentially the best player in the draft. But the Eagles did it. And that's why I think that this team is just poised to continue moving forward. That's a good one. It's a good one because you get the seven too. And from the front, that classic, you get the little Ron Jaworski uh, vibes. Or you, you see, again, from the seven, you get a little Mike Vick because they rocked him. The, the Kelly Greens, a different version of the Kelly Greens in that era. Seven, and then, oh, oh you got Hassan Reddick, who last year in a Super Bowl season led uh, the league in sacks. And he's from Philly. He's Temple made. Yeah, Hassan Reddick is a fantastic jersey to get. Fantastic. I love it. Um, A.J. Brown. Yeah, that's what uh, that's what Keith's getting. So that's why I'm not getting an A.J. Brown if I, if I end up getting one before I wouldn't mind a Kelsey. I know that that's the popular choice. I wouldn't mind a Kelsey because it's a Super Bowl winner. He's been on both Super Bowl teams uh, as of late. Um, he's he's just a Philly legend. But uh, but yeah, um, that's a good ones. Good ones, guys. It has been such a fun show. We got some new viewership. We got some old viewership. 
Um, I'm loving uh, loving the activeness in chat. Next week, uh, Tuesday is going to be a big day. Um, Tuesday will be live on whatnot during the day, and if all goes well. Uh, we will be back here. Actually, it sounds like we'll be on Twitch as well. I'm going to try cross stream. But we're going to be doing a whatnot stream. Going to be doing uh, an unboxing of some Digimon cards from 2000. Uh, so we're going to do that. Going to try to create some content for the whatnot. Uh, it's going to be a fun one. So uh, I think Jay is coming over. And we're going to do a, kind of a whole thing uh, to get that got going. Um, so, yeah. Uh, again... If we're in Philly on whatnot, and if you're like, what the hell is whatnot, go to your phone, type in whatnot on the in the store, it's an app, and then before you sign up, before you sign up, you take my what, hold on, I'm gonna drop it in chat, you get my referral, you get $10, I get $10, we all get $10, everyone shares the money, if you do not have whatnot, please, please sign up using that link. If you sign up using that link, when you make your first purchase, I get $10 in credit. What I'm going to try to do is I'm going to use all that credit. I'm going to buy something sweet, and then I'm going to sell it to you guys. Um, maybe I'll get like a Jalen Hurts numbered card. Maybe I'll get something sweet. You never know. Um, but like I'm going to get something, and then I'm just going to give it back to the community. Because that's what it's all about. Uh, so yeah, please use that invite link to sign up to whatnot and get in on it. It is a sweet app uh, for for just uh, card collectors and all kinds of things. Um, so that is my final thought. Check that out because honestly, if that does well, I do well at my job, and if I do well at my job, winning, right? So please, please, please go ahead and sign up to whatnot. Use that uh, use that invite code. Um, and again, check us out Tuesday. It was originally for Monday, but I, apparently I'm going to jury duty. So <laughs> Tuesday we will be back and, uh, we'll be live here and on whatnot. We're going to do two streams on Tuesday, two stream Tuesday. Um, so it's going to be a fun one. Thank you guys all for tuning in with that. I am Anthony Pinto. And the next time you hear from me, we will be talking about Eagles football. So on that note, E-A-G-L-E-S, let's go. Eagles! And we are out of here. Thanks, guys. Have a good night.